How's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros and today we got a gaming PC that we're gonna build for only $300. And it's a custom PC. Isn't it your typical upgraded office or workstation system? This right here is using all custom parts, diving into eBay, finding some of the best deals we could find and honestly, it should perform very well as long as everything works. When it comes to eBay, you never really know. But before we dive into this PC build, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of your unactivated Windows install on your gaming PC? Well, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall has you covered. GVG Mall is an online marketplace to gain access to really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, as we mentioned, Windows 10 licenses. It is incredibly easy to get your Windows 10 or 11 activation key from GVG Mall. Just use code TB20 to get a special discount and then all you have to do is take that code, put it into Windows and boom, you have an activated Windows copy. We have been working with GVG Mall for several years now and we love the reliability of all the products they have to offer. So be sure to check the link in the description down below. Use code TB20 to save on your next purchase of a Windows key or other product from GVG Mall. So we really do suggest going to your used market when you're building a PC for this kind of budget because $300 brand new would probably only get you an APU if that. We're actually gonna be building a fully functioning gaming PC that will play esports and even some AAA titles, which is pretty freaking awesome for 300 bucks. And the best part is this is somewhat upgradable. It's not incredibly upgradable, but it is on the AM4 platform, which we'll talk about here in a second. So you have a little bit of an upgrade path, but let's not waste any more time and talk about each individual part and how it makes up this PC. So for the CPU, we have this little bag CPU. This is a Ryzen 5 1600. This is a CPU that we know very well. It is an AE, it's not an AF, so it's not really like a 2600. This is the OG OG. Don't ship them like this, guys. I don't know, I'm surprised it made it and it doesn't look like any of the pins are really bent, but yeah, try to just find any type of foam or something to sink these pins into a little bit or just to hold them. Cause yeah, this is just dangerous, but I think we're gonna be fine with this. And for 25-ish dollars, I'm not gonna complain too much. Now eBay is also very, very common with refurb boards. So these are motherboards that often manufacturers um, of the OEM board or third party companies will go through and they'll basically fix these boards. They'll buy them in bulk and fix whatever's wrong with them. This one- like thermal paste goop yeah, all over I it. Yeah, I see the thermal paste just like all over this one, which uh, doesn't give me the highest hopes of good reverb because <laughs> I feel like it would have been cleaned better, but who knows? I mean, if the board works, it works. And it actually came with an IO shield. A lot of them don't, but for 60 bucks, if it works, this is a good deal. Now for RAM, we did order just new RAM because in all honesty, you don't save a whole lot going used unless you can find like a motherboard RAM combo. But we have this Viper Patriot 3600 megahertz RAM, 16 gigs. We really don't recommend going with 3600 unless it costs the same because you can get like 3000 or 32 for as cheap as like 30 bucks now. So it definitely makes sense just to save some money where you can when your budget's this tight. Now, just like the RAM that we don't really suggest going used if you don't have to, storage is just kind of weird getting used. I mean, you can save like maybe five to 10 bucks getting it used in Mimi, but like you have no clue how much that thing's been used. So just spend $20 and buy one of these 512 gig NVMe SSDs off of eBay, Amazon, Newegg, because yeah, they've gotten almost that cheap where you can find them for like 20 bucks here and there. Now you might've seen this graphics card on the channel before. This is the RX 474 gig with DVI only. We paid about $35, I think 35 or $39, somewhere between that range for this graphics card. And it's a pretty good deal. We did a full benchmark video on it. So if you haven't seen that video, hit the eye in the top right corner, but it does perform very well at 1080p. And I think it will pair very nicely with this older Ryzen CPU. Now with a cheap build, there's some compromises. This is the Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt. This is a power supply we've been using for a long time and they really have not updated the box in a long time because actually no, they finally did. For a while there, it kept saying Haswell ready, which is fourth gen Intel. And <laughs> I think people are more than ready for that platform by now, but 500 watts, more than that for this PC build. You can get a wide range of different options. You must spend a little bit more money, but uh, yeah, we're trying to keep things right at 300 bucks and this was the best option. And of course, with the Toasty Bros build, we couldn't just get a plain box that has no RGB or no fans or anything like that. We had to buy this case and I think we made a good decision doing so. This is the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh Micro. It is $59.90. Very good deal for a case that is white, has RGB, RGB fans, three RGB fans, and tempered glass. There's a lot of these budget MicroATX cases out there that's gonna make a $300 build look more like a five, $600 build. And I'm very excited to put this thing together and see how it performs in the latest titles. Let's do it.
So quick little update on this $300 PC because when you're doing an all use parts PC like this, something is bound to go wrong. And unfortunately, I think it was the RAM, which is ironically the new part of the build. But regardless, it's either that the RAM being 3600 megahertz, which already we were not going to use this stuff originally. We just had shipping delays and grabbed this and hoped it worked is the reason why it's not working on this A320. I would think the RAM would just uh, down clock to its uh, normal speed of like 2133 to work on the board, but maybe there's something weird going on here. I've been using these basic DDR4 sticks um, that were in like HP systems, and I was able to get eight gigs in there single channel and boot into Windows and actually get it installed. But with the other RAM, it wasn't doing that. It just kept acting like a dead motherboard, but it ended up being bad RAM, I think. As long as this kit of layers memory, which is 2666 uh, all black memory works, or me just adding another eight gig stick of this plain memory in their works then we'll have a PC build that we can actually benchmark. But as far as like what we recommend you get, since this is a used parts hunt video and you're probably not gonna get exactly the same stuff we have here, we'll leave some suggestions down below. This RAM may work for you, but I would probably just avoid it and get some really cheap stuff anyways, because you can save some money and get this even cheaper. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. This Windows install looks like it's gonna be complete. I gotta put this thing back inside the case because I've been test benching it to see what the heck is going on with it. And then from there, we will have a working computer, hopefully that can play some games. I, I, I really hope this works. I've been, I've been really annoyed with this system. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are running some Overwatch 2. And so far, you know, inside of this little area, we're looking good, over 200 FPS, but that'll obviously probably change once we get out there. 1080p, max FOV, and we're on medium graphics quality, which is like a mixture of low and medium preset. The upscaling should be off too. This should be native 1080p, so it shouldn't pretty be doing easy. that like auto adjusting. So this is pretty solid. But yeah, games like Overwatch, obviously as you can tell, this combination just works. 100 plus FPS. There are gonna be some times you're gonna get into some crazy situations where you're gonna get shot like that, mm -hmm. where the Beauty. FPS might drop a little bit, but um, it's still very playable. The latencies are pretty solid as well. But yeah, obviously with this system, we had a little bit of issues I mentioned at the beginning. It ended up being the RAM that was the problem. Uh, the RAM, uh, I believe it's either the RAM didn't work or the speed just didn't work well with the motherboard. So we end up going with just some basic HP memory we had on hand. You can use the links down below. We'll recommend just basic like 2666 or 2133 DDR4. Just get something very basic, especially for this cheap of a system. That's not really gonna hold you back all that much. What matters is you get six 16 gigs, and as you can see, now they have 16 gigs, it's working fine. One well, thing too, this system is pretty power efficient. It looks like that GPU right now is pulling about 80, 90 watts, and then the CPU is pulling about 44. So, older hardware, but it's still pretty good in terms of efficiency. Little Tourette's. <laughs> Little Tourette's. Can I get a heal, please? Ooh. Oh, oh this, is, this is working. Oh, this is working. We got the comp. This is the comp. Oh, oh Rusty. Yeah, Myra. Oh, oh okay, okay, I got I one. Get, show me the better here. Is it feels so slow? Oh. Farrah inbound. Yes. Yeah, this is good. This yes. Is good. This is good. Eat Be them. Low. Eat them Be alive. Low. Oh God! Why did I just eat that? Oh God, Rise Reinhardt inside of no! me. No! <laughs> we win that. We win that. Incompetent, hey. we win that. Let's go, GG's. Yeah, Overwatch runs really well, obviously. Pretty easy esports title, runs pretty great. Let's move on to the next game. All right, guys, we are now in Call of Duty multiplayer and I have no idea where the heck I am right now. I don't remember this map. I don't like that loadout either. Let's go back to my rifle. But yeah, right now, these are the settings we're running. We are running lower settings. We're on the basic preset, FSR. So pretty much lower settings, 1080p. A game like Call of Duty is much more demanding. So for this 300R PC, we are not gonna get like a high refresh rate experience, but we are getting close to 60. So that's nice. But yeah, latency is a little bit high. I, I would say this is an acceptable experience if you're just casually playing Call of Duty multiplayer. Warzone, we did test on this graphics card with a higher end CPU and it ran, but with the 1600, I imagine you might have some stutters and stuff that will hold you back from having an awesome experience. So I would mainly stick to multiplayer, but again, we're talking about a $300 computer. There's gonna be some compromises on games you can play. You say yummy, yummy in my tummy. I don't even know anymore. Oh, there's someone else. And to think about all the people, this is Halo needs are overpowered. Am I right? Oh, 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 hello. 
Oh, someone else got it. Not too shabby though. Runs pretty good, playable, pretty solid experience over on Call of Duty. Now what I'm gonna do, push this thing to its limits in some other built-in benchmarks. We got Cyberpunk and Far Cry 6. And then from there, we're just gonna talk about this 300 hour PC. Should you build it yourself? Well, we'll see. All right guys, we just got done benchmarking our $300 gaming PC and it is really crazy to see the level of performance that we got out of $300 and it's in a fully custom build. So if you wanna buy this gaming PC or any of the other parts in this video, make sure you check the affiliate links in the description down below, they will help us out. But yeah, the main selling point of this system is that graphics card, really you could take that RX 470D and throw it in, maybe in something a little bit newer, like an i3-10100. It would be a bit more expensive, probably in the $400 range, but you would have a better upgrade path. Really, this is just a proof of concept show if you have this graphics card you can do some deal hunting for older ryzen or older intel and make a very capable gaming pc so let us know what you think of this down below would you build a gaming pc like this or are you one of those people out there is like i'm just gonna get a console regardless we hear you all but you know what you should get gaming pcs because gaming pcs are just that much better or both why not both six hundred dollars so as always we hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did check out our other two youtube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and do not forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye this gaming PC right here will be for sale at PCBros.Tech along with a one-year warranty. PCBros.Tech, it makes you so happy, you just wanna dance. PCBros.Tech, use code ToastyBros2 on checkout to save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye. Peace out.